You're about to listen to an excerpt of Secret City Geek Lab broadcast on KTSTFM.com every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. For more news, reviews, and interviews from the world of geek, visit the Geek Lab at secretcitycomedy.com slash geek lab or like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash secret city. Enjoy the show. When Ida unexpectedly shows up at her sister's house, the staid Allison bargains her way out of mom duty for the night, and the two head off to an east side wine bar. There they run into Will and the freshly divorced sweatpants attired Clark. After some slightly inebriated commiserating about mismanaged marriages and other adult concerns, the foursome head out into the night, determined to prove they still have what it takes to have a good time. The Last Time You Had Fun stars Kyle Bornheimer, Eliza Koop, Mary Elizabeth Ellis, and Dimitri Martin, written by Hal Haberman and director Mo Perkins. I recently had the opportunity to speak with director Mo Perkins, and we talked about the journey of getting The Last Time You Had Fun to the big screen. Here is that interview. Hi, I'm with uh, Mo Perkins, and uh, I did, actually I just saw your movie last night. You came out last night. I came out last night. It Thank was great. You. I really enjoyed it a lot. Thank How would you describe the, the, the journey that has brought you to this point? fast and kind of uh, heady. I don't know. It was hard work, but good work. Rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was written by your husband. It was, yes. Okay, so is it straightforward like that? He wrote it, passed the script off to you, directed it, or was there a lot of collaboration involved? Um, you mean after after he wrote the script, did he, mm-hmm. or did was he there... want to have say in how I directed it? Well, no. Uh, <laughs> was, do, do you guys uh, collaborate? Did you collaborate with the writing process, or does he kind of go off and write? No, he goes off and writes, and he's that's his super skill, so I uh-huh. don't even want to step in his way. Uh-huh. Um, we, we came together decided that we wanted to work together mm-hmm. and kind of pick the subject matter mm-hmm. and picked out some of the details of things that we wanted the story to include. Like I wanted to try something that would take place all in one night and um, I dealt with marriage before as a subject matter and I right. wanted we wanted to have that be part of it and then he, he took it and ran with it. Okay. Yeah. So is this the, I guess this is your second film or? This is my second film. He's, he's written, um, several films that have been directed by other people and then also uh, co-wrote and co-directed a film called Special that was at Sundance and starred Michael Rappaport. He's he's done stuff, I've done stuff, but we'd never we'd never done anything together. Yeah. Was that uh, difficult or was that was there a lot of tension there? We're not married anymore. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was it was amazing. We're ready to do it again. Um. Yeah. Um, you know, if there's a difficulty in it, I if I'm always trying to please myself mm-hmm. when I do my work, I'm trying to please him tenfold more. I right. really wanted to honor what he had written and right. um, hold that up in its best light and so, make him proud of it. Right. So, uh, so it's kind of an emotional investment to get it right. You know, yeah, you know, I really like, wanted it to be good, not mm-hmm. just for the cast and and myself and everybody else who kind of came together and made it happen, but really for him too. There are three things that I like in, in my comedies. One is I like to laugh. Okay, good. Um, I like to have it grounded in reality. Yeah, me too. And I like it to connect with me emotionally. Okay. And so I'm just curious, kind of the, the genesis of just the idea of two pairs of strangers going through L.A. in a limo. Right. One night. Right. Well, I, hopefully the laughs are built in. Yeah, they definitely are. <clears throat> that's a misadventure, if ever there mm-hmm. was one. Um, it's not a, a jokey film. Yeah. No, I prefer characters that I can feel are kind of real people. And um, we talked a lot about that, that we wanted to make not a jokey film, but a film that was very dialogue heavy mm-hmm. and that felt as you're watching it and laughing as if you were meeting real people. And you're on this adventure in this limo with them. Yeah. And um, they're laughing sometimes and you're laughing sometimes. And they, it gets tough for them sometimes. And... Um, Hopefully it gets a little bit tough for the audience, too. But no, I would never call this film slapstick. Yeah. Ho- hopefully humor for grown-ups. When I was Not watching... That slapstick isn't for grown-ups. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it works in some cases. <laughs> um, so what I'm thinking is, I, you know, to me, the, the story started off in just a strange place in the sense of two strangers, two right. pairs of strangers, and they wind up in a, in a limo together. Right, right. You know, how do you get to a point like that? In real life? Like, how does that happen? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you it pulled off plausibly here. It's like, okay, yeah. I get it now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was something delicious about that for me because I wanted to kind of investigate character like that. Mm-hmm. And 
having them meet each other allowed me to kind of go through a lot of the conversation and unearthing of what's going on with them in that kind of natural environment. When you meet somebody, you explore who you are. Mm -hmm. And um, so the audience gets to meet them as they meet each other. It was a kind of nice vehicle. <laughs> I also saw the movie kind of as, uh, I described it as a marital midlife crisis. Yeah, it's uh, a, yeah. You know, I've been married uh, 15 years this week. Oh, yeah, and, congratulations. Um, oh, thanks. That's good. And That's I, I think about my life, who I was as a person 15 years right. ago, and who I am today. And, right. and it seemed like a lot of your character. I mean, that's kind of the point of the characters, is that we we grow up and we become different right. people. Right. And at a point in our marriage, you know, we have to kind of make choices. Right. We're at transitional <clears throat> points in that. Right. I, I, Hal and I talked a lot about how you can be successful on the surface at life. Like, mm -hmm. these characters are doing all right if you just see them walking down the street, but that there is this expectation that a, a large part of what, it's not an expectation, it's true, a large part of what fulfills us as human beings is that we find some kind of family and coupling and, mm -hmm. and we grow out of that. And so these four people have kind of stumbled into things where they're not being honest with themselves or their partners. And mm -hmm. so they're kind of failing yeah. and floundering and mm -hmm. And kind of wounded walking um, and through the course of this one night I think in my mind they all decide to change it it's a choice you have to make that may that has I guess that the split path one one very tough choice and the other the status quo right mm -hmm. but if you're not being honest with yourself about who you are you're mm -hmm. not going to find that you can be honest with somebody else yeah. about it and that's the Achilles heel of, of all of these. Right. Then yeah. the choice is made for you. <laughs> yeah, then the choice is made for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also want to ask you about um, acting. Um, okay. I, I liked that everyone, I mean, everything, it was dialogue heavy, which is it hard is, to do. It is. And that was actually when Hal and I sat down, we were like, we want to collaborate. Right after we want to deal with marriage mm -hmm. was we want it to be a dialogue driven film. Yeah. And part of that is because. I've been missing that in independent film. Mm -hmm. it, and I think part of the reason I've been missing it is because it's really hard, <laughs> just <laughs> in terms of just coverage. And um, it takes time yeah. to get dialogue right. Mm -hmm. um, and I I was feeling like I wanted to challenge myself that way. How did, uh, how did you pull that mm -hmm. off with your cast? Well, re rehearsal mm -hmm. and um, getting lucky with some talented people yeah. who, who are willing to try that I mean some of these scenes are they're like five minute talk just a conversation mm -hmm. you're in the middle of a conversation um, and that was new for me Hal writes it really well mm -hmm. so that helped so you feel the full journey of, of the conversation within the scene and did it help with your husband writing it to kind of have a, a vision as to how the scene would play out and mm -hmm. how the, um, or is that something you kind of saw in the editing process uh, well how well I you know I, I prep so mm -hmm. I had a vision, and then organically things happen, and, mm -hmm. and something else co comes, and uh -huh. that's a blessing, so you would incorporate that. Um, it was a little bit of both. Right. You mentioned rehearsal, because yeah. I guess a lot of times I, I see movies like this, and they tend to be very improv -y, and it feels improv. -y. Right. Yeah. Um, this feels improv and it's, it's really not. Yeah. There are a handful of improv improvisational moments and mm -hmm. most of them are kind of like a tiny joke that gets tacked on to the end of the scene mm -hmm. but really I would say 90% of it is very scripted mm -hmm. in fact <clears throat> um, some days Hal couldn't be on the set because we have a five-year-old daughter and uh -huh. so someone has to be, yep. be the parent well, somebody else would, yeah <laughs> exactly so you trade off and he couldn't always come and I would come home and he say how how did it go and I'd say it was great and he'd say did they say the words <laughs> <laughs> and they did it was really mm -hmm. we stayed very true to what he wrote yeah um and if it feels improv I feel like that's a, a credit to the actors yeah it so it feels natural like that well yeah I just thought about it. but you know I guess it was mostly shot at night how do you how do you manage a child when right. bring you're out? Right. Well, um, they did some traveling. Yeah. Yeah, and that that helped. We we shot at our house, and that was an amazing experience for mm -hmm. me because she got to be there. Uh huh. Um, it was very 
G-rated scene. It was a little girl jumping through the sprinklers. Oh, okay. So there was nothing that uh -huh. I didn't want to share with her. And um, it was actually my first time having her see what it is that I do. Uh -huh. And to get to be a part of that, she stood by the monitor with mm -hmm. me and she called action once. Yeah. And I, I don't know, it was really special to get mm -hmm. to share that with her and have her understand. Yeah. Get a taste of what what mom and dad. Yeah, I, it's not that I hope that I don't hope for her to make independent films because that's a hard road. But mm -hmm. um, it was nice to have her feel what it is that we've been pushing so hard to get done. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Speaking of independent films, big studios they don't make movies like this. Okay. Um, they should. They should. <laughs> but you know, they're, they they're more concerned. They really could. <laughs> they have the money. They should. <laughs> I know. They just. <laughs> It's loose change. They could just they, pick up a dollar off the ground. And for their craft service budget, we could make a couple of these. <laughs> this is good. So what were some of the challenges you faced once from, from script to, to day one of production? Oh, you know, I, independent film is a challenge every single step of the way. I mean, it's all the classics. It's not, it's not new, you know, budget, time, mm -hmm. um, securing cast, uh -huh. um, equipment crew mm -hmm. we were small so all our departments were kind of one person uh -huh. you know whereas if you walk onto a studio film a department is our entire shoot yeah. <laughs> did it work like okay we have a script that we're happy with uh, then we start looking to produce it or yes yeah um i knew that i wanted to work with drea clark who yeah. produced it and she had produced a short film for me um mm -hmm. two years ago that actually screened at the los angeles film festival mm -hmm. Um, it was an ITVS short. Do you know who they are? Uh, no. I'm okay, they're a they're a nonprofit, and they do a a wonderful thing where they invite independent filmmakers to um, submit science fiction film mm -hmm. ideas. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, they work with you on the script, and it's kind of like a TV show, mm -hmm. but each episode is done by a different independent filmmaker, and mm -hmm. it's about the future oh, wow. so we had made this sci-fi short together okay. see that's the thing I've learned here is you know I see these amazing films but where do I go and tell my friends to see it um, right you know where, where do you know where that would be seen yeah or? you can go online it's called Laura Keller and okay. B and um, it was starring Amber Benson and uh -huh. Martin Starr and okay. uh, Tracy Kelly and also um, um, yeah so you can go check that out. Okay, I will. Robert Baker, who's in this movie, is in that movie too. It's premiered. We saw it. It was Last great. Night. Loved it. <laughs> my my feeling is for an independent film, the work doesn't stop here. No, no. This I I'm with this movie for years. Mm -hmm. You really like to get it up is years, and then you you still have to push it into the world. Mm -hmm. um, so, any advice for people who want to? who have a vision for a movie and want to get it produced and just I guess if you look at the long road it can be really overwhelming so what I do is I try to think about what's right in front of me mm -hmm. and that's where I put my energy and I have long term goals but um, I'm going to live in the moment and jump the hurdles as, I, as they come kind of mm -hmm. and that, that that seems to work better than feeling the like the Sisyphean journey of like I gotta get this movie out into the world and, mm -hmm. yeah okay well thank you I'm speaking with Mo Perkins uh, director of the movie The Last Time You Had Fun thank you so much you're welcome thank you nice this was a production of Secret City Geek Lab on KTSCFM.com we broadcast every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. visit the Geek Lab at secretcitycomedy.com slash geek lab or like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash secretcity